Hey guys, it's Liberty with IDC Woodcraft. And today we're gonna review a little bit on how to surface a project. Garrett's actually gonna come along beside me and help me fix my mistakes and remember what to remember. IDCwoodcraft.com Hey Liberty, what you doing? I am attaching my next project and getting glue everywhere. Oh, you're doing the CA glue method. I am, and I am. What is this project that you're doing? So I'm just doing a quick little surfacing project on a little thing I made for Adam. Okay. Our videographer. I'm not even making it. Yeah. Ah! So she did okay. a little epoxy project. Yep, and I, I, you know, I'm not very experienced with epoxy. I have flooded over, so we're just going to take a little thin okay. layer off that to level it out. Be set already. Give it a little bump. To make sure. I'm yep. scared. Okay. So what? What? So you're gonna surface this thing? Yes, sir. Okay. So what is your toolpath strategy to surface this? My toolpath strategy is a pocket toolpath. Okay. Um, and I extend that pocket outside of my project's realm, so that way I can make sure I get all of the clean edges nice. Okay. And then so, what's the direction you're going? And I'm going to go with the green. Okay. So we're going to go a long ways on this one. And I'll talk to you a little bit about how you applied the CA glue. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got so nervous. You, you put it on that side, then you put it on the other side. Mm -hmm. So you, only, you always want, I think you already know this. You probably just maybe forgot. You put the CA glue on your, like your table. Mm-hmm. And then you spray the your backside project. of the project. Yep. Yeah, I got nervous, and then that one like went out too far, and then it just, yeah, it just, yeah, okay. I made it work. Thank you. All right. Okay. And what bit are you using to surface this? So guy? I'm going to use the one inch IDC Woodcraft surfacing bit. Okay. Oh, the ultra smooth. Yes. Yeah. Ultra smooth cutting IDC Woodcraft surfacing bit. This is one that I had designed, modified from your standard surfacing bit. I modified, uh, worked with the tooling company. We updated the grind angles on this and added a fourth flute for nice smooth. So the thing with the ultra smooth surfacing bit from IDC Woodcraft, what you're gonna see out there are these, like these one inch bits, they have the three flutes on them and often painted black. Those are, I used to actually carry those when I first started and I didn't like them. They weren't holding up well and not the highest quality bit. And that's why I went with my own design. Those original ones, they were the three flute, the black ones, they just didn't do very well. And so that's why these are different. You got these in the one inch and the inch and a half ultra smooth cutting. And then we also have the only company on the planet that has a, a, a surfacing bit for a one eighth shank for the little CNC routers, like the Gamatsu's 3018s. The only company, so it's a three quarter inch surfacing bit. I'll link these down below. Just wanted to point that out, that I, I really changed this design because I was not happy with the three flute surfacing bits that were out there. And I just didn't like the surface finish that they were leaving. So I always recommend this bit for what you're doing with your CNC router. Okay, so what were you doing, just doing? I am checking the chucking on this and I feel like it looks like it's too much of a gap here, but I could be wrong because I... As far as how far it's sticking out? Mm-hmm. That's about the max you would want a surfacing... That's what I was thinking. Yeah, for okay. a four quarter inch shank. So you can work with that, especially since you're only taking off... Uh, how much How much are you taking off? Oh, at a time? point... I don't yeah. even know. I point some... Zero, zero something. Okay. You very know? Very thin. Uh, very small thin, amount. small amount. So now you are loading your program up. You're using Vectric. Mm-hmm. I've got mm -hmm. my material set up, making sure my XY datum position is correct. Okay, so before you go on, here's how Liberty has set up her project. You see the white is the actual project right here. And then she made a rectangle. And the back left corner is her zero, XY zero point. And she is surfacing it raster at 90 degrees or up and down. Uh, she is staying with the grain of the material. Here I'm going to double check my tool path for kind of the same things. Make sure I've got my raster at a 90, my one inch surfacing bit in there. And then I'm going to check my depth. Okay. So she's double checking everything, which is good. So now she's working with this G control touch panel that I just got on my alt mill. This comes from CNC Labs. And this works for all GRBL or any machine. That is it, basically a PC 
uh, and it's really nice to have it mounted right on the machine, touch screen. What, you've uh, worked with it just a little bit. What do you think about having this type of setup? I like it so far. Um, honestly, like it's been really nice to not have to always come back to wherever I'm at and make sure my pages are switched over and what have you just to get my machine to move. Yeah. <laughs> so when I'm just like, oh, I need to jog it a little forward. I need to jog it a little backward. I've got right here and then... I don't know, it's just a little more hands-on. I don't feel so separated from my machine to do the stuff that I need to do, so. Yeah, that having that convenience, and what I like about this is it's a PC, and so I can have a second monitor hooked up, which I do, but we just don't have it turned on right now. So she's loading up her G-code. There it is. Can't um. wait to see this thing run. <laughs> Okay. And so you've got your zero point. Double check your, your zero move. So it's okay, just, just to. on the here, you can just hit the go to. Oh, oops, wrong one. There you go. So we just created a video. We'll link that down below of how to always know your zero point. Even if the machine shuts off, you can always go right back to that zero point. Yep. Right. She's right. ready to run, except you got a couple items on the table. That I don't do, I do, I do. And then the only thing I'm nervous about is making sure that there is a pause for the spindle to turn on within the G-code. So now okay. I want to check that. Since spindles have to wind up, they need a little bit of time to get that. She's going to double check to make sure there's a dwell command in there. So as we look pause. at it, what there are you looking go. for? I'm looking for a G4 and then a P whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, the P stands for pause and the five is seconds. So it's gonna pause for five seconds and give that a moment to start running before it continues on the... All right, so that is what we call a dwell command G code. So you see just above it is the spindle start. So it's sending a spindle speed and then the M3 is the turns the spindle on clockwise and then once it reads that, it's saying wait for five seconds, which is what the G4 is, and then it'll move. And that gives it opportunity to wind up. Got that's, that built in there. Uh, it's the, that's, oh, my, it'd be good if I set my Z. Aha. Uh -huh. You knew that one, didn't you? Uh -huh. You're waiting for it. You're waiting for it. <laughs> of course, I am seeing it. <laughs> so you like going with the touch, the paper method. I do. Um, I, not that I don't ever use the touch plate, I do, but I don't know, I'm just more comfortable with me, myself, and I. Okay, so what she's doing, she's, instead of using the touch plate here, the probe, she is putting a piece of paper down, and I have a video on this that talks about the paper touch method and how you can use the paper touch method to find exactly your X, Y, zero on any on the corners that you want for your. So what she's doing is she's nudging the spindle down until the paper stops moving like that. Now it's stuck under the thing. She's going to set her Z zero, and it looks like everything is ready. Bring the Z back up. There you go. Tell it to go to X, Y, zero. There you go, and you are ready to rock and roll. All right. <laughs> I haven't touched a machine in so long, I'm scared. All right, well, be ready to have your hand on the, the e-stop, yep. which is over there. So right just there. hit the button, okay. because it's going to take a minute for the spindle to wind up. Okay. Why is it going hit over there? Stop, okay. And we came to the wrong spot, so yep. we're going to have to see what just happened and why that went to a different <laughs> spot. Now I'm going to bet that it, it pulled up the wrong oh, G code. Oh, G code. Yep, 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 the, yep. The, the work offset. So, uh, I know why. I know why. Because in, in, okay. in my thing, it's G55. So, what? And okay. G55 is not set to the proper X and Y. Okay. So, why did G55 get in there? So, G55 is what I typically use because I have a lot of, like little things that I repeat. Um, and so like that keeps, I like the G's so you can set up different repeating projects, different X, Y's, all that. Um, but I did not take that pre-function out of this project for this machine. Right, and that's because the post-processor. Post-processor, yep, yep, yep. So what happened was the program had that G, pull up the file again, because we're yep. gonna look in it. And it's right there. And we look right there, G55, 
And that is telling that, that the work offset that she's using, or the which is this right there, the workspace offset, uh, it called up G55 instead of G54, which is what she set her XY0 at. So that's why we have our hand on the stop button when we Every time. are ready to start the project. Just one of those things that can go wrong that we don't think about. Well, so how did you fix it? So I just went in personally. I will have to change that in my post processor later. Okay. But I went into the file and... Just removed it. Then. Yeah, just right. removed it. And double check your file. And sure it's so it's, I've moved it to G54. Okay. It's safe to go now. It's saved in. Okay. Sorry. I also removed it from my G sender. So that way I ensure the right file is being reloaded back in. This G54, G55, it goes G56, 57, 58, and 59. These are called work offsets. And they enable you to create fixed points for repeat projects. So if I want to do a cutting board inlay and I've had a station right here for that, then I can use G55 for that location and I can have it set up in the machine and it'll always know that that position is there. And then say I have coasters I'm gonna make over here and I use G56 and I have a fixture here, a fixture there. And that G-code always has to know is it has that G55 or 56 G-code work offset command in it, and it will know that the start point is over here. A little more advanced stuff, but that's usually for when you're running production work and you're running multiple different types of projects. So it's very handy stuff if you're getting a CNC business and you know you're gonna be running the same stuff over and over. So at this point, you are ready to restart. Again. Okay, here we go. That always makes you a little sorry, nervous, doesn't see, it? It does. You find the button again? Okay, yep. found the button. Hand ready on the e-stop, hit run. Unfortunately, the e-stop's not in a good spot with that it is control not. panel. All right. Okay, so. So you notice how it's not running off the edge? So, yeah. your, so your rectangle that you built that in is not big enough. Not big enough. It's only coming but off it's, about it's, half. It's going to work for, the, for now. Mm -hmm. the, thing, the thing is, we don't want to plunge the, with a surfacing bit. You don't want to plunge into the material. Right. So we are going to have to modify that a little bit. And actually, it's going to work out pretty well here because you're not taking off much. Look at that. That's already looking pretty good. Quite good. So what I can do is, because I do want to take another small layer off of this at least. There we go. And so now she's going to restart it. One of the things is, get your hand on that switch. Okay, so very small amount. That's all we need. So what we'll do is, we will do that again with the, with the zero 05. Mm -hmm. And just keep just nudging it down until you get everything cleaned up. We're making multiple passes. Just one last thing, as I said before, it's not, fully it's not running off the end, so your rectangle needs... When you do all these rectangles to do the surfacing, you've got to watch the video that I made about how to surface a project. I'll link that down below. Is you have a one-inch tool that needs to come off uh, an inch. So I will add an inch to the rectangle on both sides and I'll add another half inch. Okay. Okay, and then a half inch off this side, half inch off that side. All right, she's gonna finish it up. You got a little bit of paint left on there. Yeah. Uh, you can surface it again, but you decide you wanna sand it? I've decided I think I wanna just try sanding it a little bit okay. just to get that last so bit off. So we're using my, my DeWalt hand sander. Um, I, I just switched over to all these battery operated power tools. Okay, okay, and so they all I, flow I, together. I have found that this is really convenient because I can always just keep it right under the machine. Right, sanding. right. So I will link this down below in the description of the video if you wanna get one of these. I do recommend having a hand sander if you're doing this a lot on your machine, and you can sand right on the machine. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and... It's not even that loud either.
Thanks guys for joining along on this video, helping me learn, helping you learn. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you learned or what more you could learn, and we'll learn together at IDC Woodcraft. IDCWoodcraft.com.